Hi friends, welcome to another chapter of Read Aloud. We are getting so close to the end of the book. There are only three chapters left. Your thinking question for this chapter is, did you see it coming? I'm not going to elaborate on that because you will find out what I'm talking about soon. Chapter 29, Arella the something. Anguish. Arella finally understood what that meant. All along, she'd thought Anguish would be coming face to face with the wicked king of her nightmares. But she'd met him not too long ago, and that was nothing compared to this. Anguish wasn't the presence of someone she feared, but the absence of someone she loved. An empty chair at the table, an empty pair of boots. These quiet little absences would scream his name louder than any kind of memorial, constantly reminding her that he was gone. Morella stiffened and gasped. The old Arella would have been yanked back to the present, but the new Arella was in too much agony to care. Whatever had surprised Morella, it didn't matter. Nothing did. Then, beside her, she heard a weak, Are you crying, elf? Arella screamed and jumped away. Morella let out another frightened gasp and dropped Mavic's head. He groaned, rubbing the back of his head. Arella stared at him in shock through tear-soaked eyelashes as Mavic pulled off his blood-drenched shirt. All that was left of his wound was a faint pink scar. He touched it carefully, then grinned. Not bad for a witch. Arella gaped at him, open-mouthed. I thought you were dead. He chuckled. I'm obviously not dead if I'm talking. Are you a ghost? He rolled his eyes. No, Ella, I'm not a ghost. Mavic? Morella said in a hushed voice. That's my name. She flung her arms around him and squeezed him so tight he thought Morella might actually kill him. Too tight, he grunted. She released him, then kissed his cheeks and forehead. Morella was too stunned to move. How did you do that? Morella asked in awe. How did you heal yourself like that? I didn't. She did. He pointed at Arella. Arella shook her head. No, that's impossible. I don't speak your creepy witch language, but that's kind of what it sounded like you were trying to do. Right. I'm a witch. I don't even know warlock language. I was chanting in the language of the witches for crying out loud. I didn't actually think it'd work. I was just desperate. You were desperate to save me? Mavic grinned. All right, come on. Admit that you love me. Arella stuck her tongue out. Close enough, he chuckled. Are you really okay? He stood up slowly and held out his arms. Ta-da! I'm fine. Arella flew across the space between them and wrapped her arms around him. Her momentum knocked Mavic back down on his rear end. Arella sobbed. She couldn't stop. She'd never cried like this before and had never felt so out of control. Mavic just stroked her hair and told her that it was all okay. When she finally had enough control to sit up again, she let Mavic go and hugged her knees. Tears continued to stream down her face, red and blotchy from crying. Gee, elf, all this for me? Arella kicked his leg. Ah, there you are, he smiled. Mavic, sweetheart, Morella said. I'm still a little confused. It's not possible that Arella healed you. No witch can physically manipulate things. Well, then there's only one explanation, Mavic said. What? Arella's not a witch. What are you talking about, bonehead? muttered Arella, wiping her nose. What are you trying to say? I'm a warlock or something? I don't know if you noticed this, but I'm a girl. I have no idea what you are, Ella, but you're more than just a witch. Morella shook her head. Mavic, no, listen, he said. How many witches do you know that can manipulate fire? That's ridiculous. No witch can do that. She did. She did? And you could see her disguise, couldn't you, Morella? I could tell from the look on your face when we came in the room. Well, yes, I did. 
It was quite disconcerting. I thought you were just a couple of guards, and then one of you started talking with Arella's voice. How many witches do you know that can manipulate another witch? Morella shook her head in disbelief. None. Is that why I can see my own disguises and illusions? Arella asked. Am I manipulating myself? You may be, which I've never encountered before either. Part of the difficulty of witch manipulation is that you have to work blind because no witch sees her own manipulations. Something else occurred to Morella. You were powerful enough to manipulate the king. Not even I can do that. What do you mean you couldn't manipulate the king? Arella said. You've been doing it every day since I was born. Slathgar may have been twisted, but he wasn't a fool. After he realized that he married a witch, he had himself trained in resistance. What's that? Mavic asked brightly. I want to try. It's extremely difficult, but not impossible, to resist manipulation. It takes years of practice and incredible skill, but if one is properly trained, they can resist a witch's spell. The king was highly trained in that art. The only reason I could manipulate his memories was because I made sure to wake up before him and manipulate him in his sleep. Much like witches, humans and warlocks can't resist while sleeping because it requires concentration. But you beat him, Arella. Even with all my experience, I could never manipulate him to see, hear, or do anything if he was consciously aware of it. Morella stared at her in awe, which made Arella feel uncomfortable. She looked away and took in their surroundings. One dead king lay on the floor, and two guards lay unconscious, one with deep purple bruises on his neck. Arella flinched, knowing that was her doing. Shane colored her pink, and she hid her face in her hands. She could have killed him. The sound of footsteps echoed down the hallway. Hide, Morella whispered, pointing to the closet. Mavic struggled to his feet again. His face turned pale. Feeling queasy, he swayed and grabbed the footboard of the bed for support. He stared at the giant pool of blood on the floor. Uh, is all that mine? Morella nodded. I'm not sure if Morella replenished blood into your system or not when she healed you, but if I were you, I'd take it easy. Morella, help him. Morella draped his arm over her shoulders and gripped his waist then walked them over to the closet and shut the door. They heard voices in the other room, but could not understand what was being said. Then the closet door swung open, Arella's scream caught in her throat when the silhouette of Morella's wavy hair filled the doorway. They're gone, but I'm going to hide you two for a while just to be safe. Morella went out into the hallway and came back with a torch. She walked toward Mavic and Arella to the far end of the closet and banged around on the back wall. Um, Morella, what are you doing? Asked Mavic. I know he's dead, but I don't think the king's clothes are really your style. A secret door swung open behind a shelf of royal underwear. She guided them through the door and lit a few more torches on the walls. It was a secret bedroom, much smaller than the king's, but equally lavish. What is this place? Mavic asked. The king was not always faithful to his wife, Morella muttered stiffly. He often used this hidden bedroom for secrecy. Now the two of you need to rest up while I'm gone. I'll have some food and clean clothes sent to you as soon as I can. There will be some major damage control I have to deal with, and it's not going to be pretty. Arella started to protest. I'm fine. You look dead on your feet, Morella cut her off. I don't care what you are, that was a lot of manipulation you did in there and you need to rest. What did you say to the people that came into the room? Asked Mavic. I lied. I told them that the king tried to kill me, so two guards came to my rescue. The king knocked one of them out, but the other stabbed him through the heart. How did you explain the two pools of blood? I dragged Slathgar to where you'd been laying before anyone came into the room. I said the guard that stabbed him dragged him across the room to hide the body, but then, realizing he just killed the king, he tried to strangle himself in shame. Gosh, you're like a compulsive liar, Mavic chuckled. Morella, Arella said quietly. Is that man going to be okay? The one that I... He'll be all right, I think. 
and I'll make sure that neither guard is punished since they were only doing their duty and protecting me from the king. Well, that's the story anyway, and seeing as I just spared their lives, those guards have agreed to stick to it and proceed with discretion. Rest up. I'll be back as soon as I can with food and new clothes. As soon as Morella closed the door, Morella collapsed to the ground. Mavic knelt beside her. Ella, you okay? She sat up and rubbed her temples. Yeah, I just suddenly feel like I haven't slept in three days. Is this how you feel when you manipulate things? Pretty much. At least you don't have to deal with the headache part of it. Come on, elf. Up you go. He held out his hand and helped her to her feet. Then he scooped her up in his arms and carried her to the bed. Mavic, what are you doing? She tried to squirm out of his grip. You're so weak. Put me down. He looked down at her with uncharacteristic seriousness. Ella, you just saved my life, and there's no way I can repay you for it. So just let me be nice to you, all right? You deserve to be taken care of now and then. He laid her on the bed, tucked her in, and kissed her forehead. It was so tender, she felt homesick for her parents, who used to be the ones to tuck her in. But Arella was asleep before her tear hit the pillow. And that is the end of that chapter. Chapter 30 is called Reunions and Goodbyes. All right, so the thinking question was, did you see it coming? And what I was referring to was Mavic not actually being dead. And I want to pose a follow-up question. What do you think this story would be like without Mavic? How would the story be different if he wasn't in it at all? All right, I will see you guys next time for the second to the last chapter in the whole book. See you later.